here I am back in South Carolina and this discussion is about bridge geometry and break angle. Now there's a lot of misconceptions about break angle. A lot of people assume, well I gotta have 45 degrees. Well, if that was just a single part of it, I, I would agree with you, but you cannot look at it just that way. The string, as you know, is connected to the top underneath here with a bridge pin. So this bridge is part of a structure. You have six other strings on here. Now, if you do a spectrum analysis or even an analysis with an oscilloscope, the break angle can be considerably less than 45 degrees because if you think of it this way, your string is being pulled. It's connected down here. What is more important than anything is the overall string height off the top. That is the big key. Uh, using an oscilloscope, uh, Alan Kruth also did the same kind of an experiment. We did this a couple of years ago when we actually found that break angle doesn't really affect much until you get down below five degrees, which may sound counterintuitive to a lot of people, but it is because when you look at the bridge, the bridge just doesn't move at this point. The whole bridge is going to be vibrating. So a lot of people just make the assumption it's this. So remember, you've got to take into consideration the point where the string is fixed at the bottom, underneath the top. You have the bridge plate, you have the bridge, and naturally you have the saddle. So when you look at this structure, remember the big variables are not just it's the bridge plate, because do you use a small one? Do you use a big one? Is your bridge wider or higher? I think what a good key to go by is the overall height of the string in front of the bridge should be between 7 16 and a half of an inch when you're all strung up. In engineering terms it's talking about what they call the centroid of the force and the centroid of, of the structure. And those two terms can sound a little intimidating, but the way that you can figure out mathematically how the string tension is being applied by taking the sine of the angle from this point to the point in front of the bridge pin and then you also have to take a look at it as it comes down through the bridge. So when you look at this particular bridge plate it just basically covers the bridge. If you look at a wider bridge now your structure is different because when this is moving not only is the bridge moving, the bridge plate's moving, and that all influences the top. Now, this is not necessarily to create a, a argument over break angle per se, but you have to take a look at the structure of the bridge, the weight of the bridge, your bridge plate, and the overall thickness of this composite, because you have these three structures working together. The one variable that I'm not showing yet is how your bridge is coming over and attaching underneath. Some of them will come in and they'll catch the, the corner, some will vary a little bit. So you have to take a look at all of this together. It's not just break angle. And a lot of people tend, maybe they aren't aware of it, and I hope by showing you this, when you're doing this, how the bridge is shaped. I've seen some people, and I have to agree with them, if you take the bridge and take this radius and take it a little bit further so that you can lighten the bridge up but remember it's all together it's not just the bridge it's just not the saddle and it's not just the brake angle it's the whole unit and you must pay very close attention to all of these variables so I'm not going to tell you that a 45 degree brake angle is good or bad I like to see a nice healthy brake angle and my, my perfect, in my feeling, the perfect saddle height outside the bridge should be about 150 to 180 thousandths. And you want to have the slot of the bridge to be as, as much as the exposure of the saddle. So you want that structure to be there. The other thing you want to take a look at is when you put your saddle in there, do you have to force it in? You want the saddle to go in that it fits nice and smoothly. Now yes, that falls out, but it does not wiggle. That thing is in there and it's just nice. So remember, 
when you're looking at this, just don't assume it's break angle. Understand that it's the whole connectivity to this. And when you build your guitars, think about the shape of the bridge, the width of the bridge, how far the saddle is to the front of the bridge, whether you have your holes that go parallel with the saddle or opposite. I don't really think that that, I've heard guitars both ways. Uh, Wayne Henderson builds a great sounding guitar and he does a nice little arc in his bridge pins. So when you think of it this way, this all connects the bridge and the whole bridge is moving. The bridge is just not moving at that point. The entire bridge is working. So you can really get into a lot of high math trying to figure all of this out. But just when you think of it, basically strings pulling up. There's formulas out there that you can find that can tell you exactly what the string tension will be that's based on uh, the overall length of the scale length, the diameter of the string. So obviously a short scale is going to have a little less string tension than a long scale. And I just hope that this helps explain to you a little bit of the physics and the actual geometry of this structure. Now, I hope that you look at it, think about it, and play with it and experiment a little bit. Uh, I don't think you need a very, you don't need the big wonking bridge plate. You can see this bridge plate is what they call a narrow bridge plate per Martin standard. I like to have my bridge plate maybe a little wider than this. But I have seen bridge plates that were shifted forward and were just maybe a quarter of an inch from the bridge pins. So all of those variables you can use as a way of, of toning your guitar, so to speak. And if that gives you something to think about, I hope I did my job. Uh, just remember, it's not just the break angle, it's the whole structure. And as you start losing string height when you get into the next set era, that really is where the energy starts to dissipate. The lower it goes, the less energy you have for this torquing. So if you look at it in a way from the point of the saddle to down here at the bridge, and this starts going down, you start losing the energy to create the torque on the top. So I hope that helps. I hope that explains a little bit to you. Look at it play with it. That's the best thing I could tell you to do. Experiment. Uh, no true discovery was ever made by status quo thinking. Sometimes mistakes are ways to make a good discovery. And as Henry Ford said, making a mistake gives you an opportunity to redo with better information. So from my shop to yours, I hope you have a great one. Stay safe.